Hello everyone and happy Halloween. This is Dr. James Kundar at Pacific University and I'm going to be showing you in the next few minutes a video on how to do some color vision tests that you'll need for your proficiencies uh, for lab coming up this week for our visual perception class. So let's start with the D15 here and uh, we've got our Halloween decorations out. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone how the D15 looks. There are two kinds of D15 of course. We have here the, the Farnsworth D15 which is the saturated caps and you can see here they are in a, not a random order, but in a specific order that might be done by a colorblind patient. Also you have the, the desaturated D15, which are the lanthany caps you can see here, also in an order that might be done by a patient. Now what's uh, not known to a lot of you is, first of all, that there is a fixed cap at the end that's glued down, you can't lift it up. And in the case of the lanthany, in the acrylic case, if you flip it over, it's cap number zero. These tests are meant to be flipped over, so in the wooden ca the box case, you close the box, you flip the test carefully, and you open it up again, and there you will see the numbers with the fixed pilot, or cap zero, staying at one end, and it's blue in this case. So to, uh, to record the D15, what you want to do is you want to use the recording form, and this can be done by computer these days, but generally you copy the numbers that you see here, uh, starting with the pilot cap end of things, and you copy them to the subject's order line. So in this case, we have cap 1 and 2, and then cap 15, you can see, and 14, and 3, and so on. And those go here. Um, there's a test and a retest order. This is generally, all these tests are done OU. And if you don't have a room with lots of sunlight, you want to use uh, a, a, generally, you want to use one of our, our special full spectrum lights and have the other lights off. So for purposes of video, I've, I've not done that. But let's just look here. If we connect the dots then from 1 to 2, and then across to 15, and then from 15 to 14, down here, and from 14 up to 3, and so on. And I think you can see there's an axis for this. And the axis in this case is consistent with, you can see, Dutan right here. So uh, you want to generally see, remember this test, the D15, Farnsworth D15, the saturated one, is the easiest of the color vision tests, even under the right lighting. And so generally someone who makes mistakes on this has a pretty severe problem or an anopia. The, the Lanthony D15 also can be graphed on the same paper, but you can see again that the first cap is a light blue, and then this, this patient has things out of order. This has more sensitivity, but also has more false positives, so it's not very selective. And uh, so that there's really no great solution to giving an accurate cap test with only 15 caps. Now, if we want to move around a bit to our, our next test, we have here the 100 hue. And the 100 hue, of course, I'm going to turn on our light, but it's 85 caps. Now you can see me, hello. Um, the uh, 85 caps are in four trays of 22 or 23 apiece, and you can see one of them has a white dot on it. And so this tray, which is the greens and the blue greens, you move these around with the magnetic wand so you never get your fingers on the caps. It's important not to touch them. The oils of your fingers will change, of course, the color of your test. So if you get a sealed test like this, it's the next best thing to digital. They get arranged in the tray like so, and I'm just going to go ahead and quickly arrange them in no particular order, and I'm going to see if we can uh, get them all in there so we can score this tray. And once you do this, you have to flip it over to look at the numbers on the bottom. And generally, you can't rearrange it um, once you have it in the tray. You can't rearrange it further. So you have to uh, get it right in the work area and then put it into the row. And then this is meant to be flipped over. And, and a patient who is very determined could get this done in, in five minutes or so per tray. Generally done, again, OU. Flipping the tray over now, you can see that the order of the caps on here. There's a lot of confusion over grading this. I do think, as I've said on Moodle, that the grading of the 100 hue is now done by computer, if in fact the whole test isn't done by computer. So, but what you want to generally do is here we have caps. It looks like 21 was our first cap, and it looks like it goes up to about cap number 42 as you look along here. So you can see on the grading form where the, this row is. So there's a cap 21 is the pilot cap. It's at the end of this row. And generally, we write the number above that we got there. You could just write the mistakes if you like. I think that's what Dr. Cooper recommends. If we bring this on over, then I'm going to write above each of the other caps I got here. 22 is in the right place, okay? And then 23 is in the right place, and 24. But then 26 is out of place. It's in the 25 spot, and 25 came next. That's a single cap reversal. 27 is in the right place, 
and 29 is reversed by 1. You can see it's a little easier if you don't, if you just write the mistake cap. So that's what I'm going to do from now on. So this one, it, the ones that are incorrect, I'm going to circle just to distinguish them. 29 is in the wrong place. Then I started putting them in in random order. So we're going to put 41 uh, for our next one, if you can see that. And uh, 38 is next, and so on. And then cap uh, 40, it looks like, um, comes after that. So I'm going to show you an example here of scoring. And I'm sorry for the shaky camera work, um, but let's see if we can steady this up a little bit. So when we're supposed to have cap 25 and we really have cap 26, that's a one difference, but we want to check the difference between the adjacent caps. So as the instructions from Dr. Cooper show, the difference between cap 24 and the number we put there, 26, is a 2. So that's a 2. And the difference between 26 and 25 is a 1. So the cap score for this mistaken cap is 3. So at, at number 25 down on the graph below, let's see if we can get this in focus. Draw back a little bit. Okay, so at 25, the first ring is 2. That's the best you can possibly do. So we're going to put 25 at 3. That's our cap score. For the next cap, it's the difference between those two is 1, and the difference between 25 and 27 is 2, so there's also a 3, and that tends to compound when you have one cap reversed, you're going to have um, two errors. So again, that's a 3 down below, right there. So now we have uh, cap 27 is in the right place, but 20, where 28 should be, we have number 29. So there's going to be a difference of 2 between those, and a difference of 2 between 25 and 27. That gives us a cap score of 4. So for cap 27, we're going to put it out at 4. And let's see if we can do that here. And that's going to be right here. So you can see how you can get some spikes in your graph. And here's our big mistake. Between 29 and 41, we have a difference of 12. <laughs> and, um, and we add that to the 2, we get a 14 cap score. That's going to be a huge spike at number 28. And if we look all the way out, um, we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 for cap 28. Um, so let's make sure we put that in the right place. So again, going all the way out, um, 2, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Something like out here is where that cap would be. So there's a huge difference between those two, and we have to show that as a big old spike. And just to do one more, maybe to get the idea here, the difference between cap 41 and 38. 38's in the wrong place, but there are only three different. So now we have a 15 is the cap score of those two. So that will go out one more line, something like this. So there we, there's, we're going to have a spike. And if you look at that spike, that's really kind of the axis you would have for a protan. And that's how you score the 100 hue. With your two minutes on your proficiency, you won't have time to do much of that. But we will ask you to instead, uh, instead, of doing that, we'll ask you instead to, to rate a completed one of these and tell us whether it's protan, dutan, tritan, and whether it's mild, moderate, or severe. So this would be protan, this spike, and this is looking moderate to severe because it almost touches the outer ring. Now just to go over here for the 100Q, we have no full spectrum light, but we are in the window light. Um, this is the um, from the 100Q to the HRR test. What I want to show you is these, make sure you have the same test and the same recording form. You'll see these have the same 1957 copyright. <laughs> so, um, and here, here we have it. This was donated to the school. Um, and we have them back in print now, but we just don't have the new version up here. And there's LeGrand Hardy, Gertrude Rand, and Catherine Rittler who um, wrote the test. Notice that the only one with a PhD is Dr. Rand. Hardy was an AMD ophthalmologist. So the plates are labeled here, and they were relabeled by us when we got it as a donation. There's, a, there's screening plates, demonstration plates, uh, A, B, and such, and so on, C. Some of them have one shape, some of them have two. Remember, there are always shapes on the HR test. And then plate D has nothing to my eye, although some of you that are color deficient may feel like you see something there. Um, then we have the blue-yellow plates for, for screening. And these are at the beginning here. Plate 1 and 2 are for blue-yellow screening. Okay, there's plate one, there's plate two. And then it, if anyone fails those, then they would go on to get plate 17 through 20 to test for tritan defects. And you'll see on the recording form, teratan defects, which are, are even more severe, uh, an archaic term that we did not use in class. Plates three through six, if you look at the numbers here, are for screening uh, for red-green defects congenitally. And normally if a patient passes these first six plates and the demo plates, they're done with the test. After 10, 
they're done. So letters A through D and one through six, they're done with the test. So if you look carefully here, there is triangle and an X. You're just writing down what they see on the recording form for screening. And then these look blue, bluish green and plate five and plate six. Okay, now this is only one shape here visible to me, the X in the lower right-hand corner, circled in the previous plate in the upper left. That's plate five. So um, when we go on, when someone misses even one of those, then generally you run them through the diagnostic series. And what a lot of people don't realize is diagnostically, this is what a protan sees, and this is what a dutan sees. Technicians are usually the ones running these tests, and they're not meant to have to think it through. So you guys don't think through it too hard. Protan, this is not what disappears. <laughs> dutan, this is not what disappears. A dutan, if we look at it, um, maybe even we'll go to plate eight where it, or nine where it's, um, or 10, where it's a better color that we're used to. So if we look at plate 10, this is still for a mild red-green defect. A protan sees the circle. A dutan sees the X. So let's look at it. The circle here is kind of purple. Protan can see it. For a dutan, it turns gray and black. The X is kind of red, and so for a protan, you have, uh, you have that disappear, and for a dutan, they can see it, and that's exactly what the answer key says. So make sure it makes sense when you're grading this, and if you're comparing it to your 100Q or your D15, that you have um, answers that, that make sense to you. Uh, it's not as obvious when you get to plate 11 and some of these ones that are kind of an aqua and a, sort of a teal green, that, that the uh, circle in this case is seen by the dutan, and the protan sees the X. I guess the X is more of a clean green, the, uh, the circle is more of a, a blue, um, and dutans perhaps have an easier time seeing that. So in any case, that's how it goes. And then it goes to the moderate uh, severity and the severe color deficiency. So that's how you grade anomaly versus anopia on the HRR test. The final things we have to do, uh, we're going to skip over the Macbeth easel and the uh, Ishihara. I think you know how to do those. We will be asking you about the Farnsworth Lantern, so make sure you know what a dutan and protan would see on that red, green, and white light test that we have down in the clinic. Perhaps that'll be my next video. But for the anomalous scope here, this is the Oculus anomalous scope, and it does have um, a weight of testing blue-yellow, but it, mostly we use it for red-green. So what you're going to do is, do if you haven't done this in lab, do examine, screening test, and start. And then what you'll see, and I don't know if I can get the, uh, the camera to see in here, but we'll try. There we go. And you say whether it's equal or unequal, and then there's a washout light. So the first one was green on top. This one looks pure yellow. And you might have be asked to do this in the way a protan or a dutan would do it. And this one looks like it has some red in it. So a protan would uh, perhaps answer that was equal. And this has even more red in it. Protan would answer that was equal. And then we should be seeing there's a couple more. This one looks like it's yellow, and I don't know if we have anything else uh, in there. Maybe a faint green. And this one definitely you can see the yellow, and it's not quite matching to me. And there goes our Halloween clock right on cue. We can see I tested as Deuter Anomaly, or my phone did, uh, but of course I'm not really that. So that's it for our Halloween video. We'll uh, do one on the Lancer next, and uh, it's 11 a.m. on Halloween 2013. I hope you all enjoyed this video and that you do well in your proficiencies, and have a happy and safe Halloween.